Okay, what we have here is a 2008 Dodge Challenger SRT. Uh, I just got done shooting a video on how to detail the engine while I was working, as is always the case. My brain's constantly spinning, thinking of ideas that I can uh, throw out to you guys uh, that are trying to get into the business, that are trying to raise their level of performance. So I thought I'd take you for a little tour. I'm going to add some little tips. Um, I will link this to my previous video so you can check that out if you like, which is how I detail the engine of this car. And with that video, I'll link it to this. So who knows how you'll find this video if in fact you do. But I thought I'd take you for a tour, let you know what products I use, some safety tips, some words of wisdom in the world of professional detailing. So let's go in and have a look. Okay, as far as the paint goes, uh, clayed it or washed it, clayed it, and then I use Pinnacle Signature Series 2 Paste Wax as my foundation or base coat. I pulled it in the garage, I did it in the shade. Could I do it in the sun? Yes, I could, but it is easier in the garage in the shade. Then, as a rule, I always follow up with their, uh, like this one is called their Crystal Mist Carnuba Detail Spray. Different manufacturers have different names. So me, personally, this is going to achieve, let's say it could achieve a 9.5. This is gonna achieve that last little 0.5% on that scale of one to 10 of perfection. Of perfection. I can also use it to finish the outside of the windows. So I like that part too. So I use this first and then I always follow up with this. So that's what I used on the paint. Okay, as far as the inside goes, you know, if you've seen some of my other videos, I love the uh, bucket jockey for this car because it really was not a disaster by any stretch of the imagination. I used my Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner, traditional scrub brush, and a microfiber cloth to clean the interior. And when we go in for a look, you'll see that this interior is made up of leather, vinyl, plastic, and a synthetic suede-like uh, material uh, like a brand name of Alcantara or Alcantara, depends on who you ask. So that's what I did on the inside. Okay, also on the outside, I use Solution Finish for the exterior black trim. I use this more and more. I'm becoming more and more in love with this product. Uh, it is a permanent solution to restoring black trim. Now, the trim on this particular car was not out of hand. But when we go around for a little tour, I'll show you the back piece, and that was actually becoming rather degraded. Now it's truly restored as a permanent solution. So that also is what I used on the exterior. Wheels and tires. Wheels to clean them, I use my wheel brightener by Meguiar's. Uh, when I degrease the tires, I use my Meguiar's super degreaser. And then I finish the, at the end with the dressing, the hyper dressing straight. I do not dilute it when I'm using it on tires. So one of the most basic rules is if you happen to go back and see the video where I'm detailing the engine, you'll notice that the car was actually parked half in the garage, half outside the garage. This has an automatic garage door. So part of one of my rules, and if you've seen my latest video where I do a tour of my van, one of the biggest First, most foremost rules is you never leave the car keys in the car itself. Why? Because someone will hit the door buttons, like if you're working with an employee or yourself and you won't know about it and you'll shut the door and bam, the key is locked in the car. So I have a special place in my van where I always keep their keys. It's either there or on the front windshield only nowhere else and not in your pocket that's the second rule never put them in your pocket oops <laughs> it was in my pocket okay I just broke my own rule but first you learn the rules then you learn how to break them you know why you never put them in your pocket because let's say for example I finish this car and in your head you're thinking oh well I can't move it without the key right well, what if I'm finished up and I know that as a rule, I have to move this car back into position and therefore I'm going to have to reach into my pocket and pull out the key. Then after I moved it, then I can leave the key with the car or with the customer. But guess what? What if I'm working and Johnny customer comes out and says, hey Darren, 
don't pull it in the garage because I'm gonna, I'm gonna be leaving in like a half an hour so you can just pack up and leave. Well, guess what? If that key is in my pocket and I have now been distracted and I forget about it, guess who drives off the key? Guess who's had to learn the hard way? You're right, me. So I was 45 minutes down the road on the freeway and I get a call from my customer that says, hey Darren, where's my key? It's like, oh crap. Uh, it's right here. I'll be, I'll be there as soon as I can. Okay, you don't want that to happen. Secondly, the garage door, they're automatic. You think, well, who's going to come in and shut the garage door? Sorry about the dogs. Who's going to come in and shut the garage door and they clearly see that a car is in the way? And this garage door even has sensors on it. So if there's something blocking that beam, it can't shut. Well, guess what? I never trust it, okay? So I actually will get on my stepladder, unplug the garage door, so no accidents can happen. That's called risk management, as I've talked about in my other videos. And you think, oh, come on, Darren. I mean, give me a break. Well, guess what? When you're inside the car and you're cleaning it, and it's half in and half out, guess, what it, guess what's often on the sun visor? That's right, the garage door opener. Well, not intentionally are you going to push that button, but what if you push that button? And what if those sensors, in fact, are not working or they're not being blocked perfectly to keep the garage door from coming down? And you hit that button and now you go into a, a panic mode and you see the garage door, you hear it, you see it come down on that car. Not a good thing. So those are my little uh, words of warning. My next third biggest one, which I'll leave off with is you always, 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 did I mention always? You always have to double check your work. Now I never just double check my work in a shaded garage. I will look, but I'm always gonna pull it out into the sunlight. Why? Because that's where most people are gonna look at their car coming and going. If it's parked in their garage, they're just gonna look at it and most things look great in the shade, okay? It's hard to discern flaws or blemishes or parts you missed in the shade but like let's say they drive to the market and then they're walking out backed out to the car from the market and now they start checking out their freshly detailed car from 50 feet away and guess what they're doing that's right they're critiquing it they're analyzing it they're looking for perfection they're looking to see if you miss something and what if you actually did miss something smudge on the window you left some wax you, you left some tire dressing on the wheel, whatever. So always, always check your work. And I don't mean pull it in the sun and just look at one side. I mean you literally pull it and you look at all sides. So I will look at this side and inspect it and scrutinize it in this lighting. I will turn it around. I will scrutinize the other side in the direct sunlight. Always do that. So let's go in and have a look. So what are we looking for? Well, I doubt it's going to show up in this lighting and that's the cool thing with videos and pictures if you want to call it that is that it is very forgiving. So for probably most of you this car looks flawless but the reality is is this paint is not flawless. It actually has permanent water spots on it. Now that would require about seven to eight hours of polishing in order to remove those water spots. Okay, if for most people that don't have a critical eye and they can stand back, this is what I call the realistic perspective. This is how most people are gonna look at their car. And it's like, okay, so we go from a $250 detail job to like a $800 or $1,000 detail job to remove those water spots. For most people, it's just gonna be a non-issue. It's like, Darren, I can't see them. Don't worry about it. So that's, that's my perspective, keeping it real, the difference between perfection and profitability, uh, what's appropriate for Johnny customer. Anyhow, so the seating on this, it's got the synthetic suede uh, velour type of material, it's got leather. Uh, it will have leather up here on the seating surface and then synthetic on the side. Synthetic leather, vinyl, you can call it whatever you want. This car was pretty straightforward. We have traditional carpeting. Um, headliner it was really easy to clean. I just took my damp 
microfiber cloth with cleaning solution on it and it did have a lot of like white type of uh, fingerprints and smudges all over it so make sure you look up and make sure you check the sun visors um, let's see uh, compartments inside here you got to check compartments you got to look in places because it is all about the details Okay, on the outside, we've got the wheels. I cleaned them all the way through. They look good. The brake calipers, the sidewall is shiny. The wheel wells have been dressed. The wheel well lips have been cleaned. I used the solution finish on the black trim here, on the black uh, chin spoiler there, to restore it for a permanent fix. I also used it back here. Now this is where it really was starting to degrade and fade and it had a very inconsistent appearance to it now it's very uniformed it's got a nice sheen to it but it's not uh, greasy or oily um, anyhow so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin this around check out the other side but I just want to add those few tips for you guys uh, as far as the graphics go it's a case by case if they're textured at any degree I don't use the paste wax on it I use a spray wax just make sure it's a non-staining formulation and then you can use it on any of the vinyl graphics okay kids till next time